Valorant. Ooh. What'd you say, Lincoln? You can just mess with it. That's what I'm trying to do. Because on today's Locked on Women's Basketball podcast, we will be going over our mock draft. We will be doing it live. And this will either be the most or least informed mock draft that you will see in the entire 2024 WNBA draft news cycle, depending on how today goes. Locked on Women's Basketball starts now. Ogumba Wallet for the win. You are Locked On Women's Basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball. Welcome to the Saturday episode of the Locked On Women's Basketball podcast, the internet's only WNBA draft-themed podcast. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. No longer Apple, no longer Google Podcasts, I should say, because that died a couple days ago, much to the chagrin of myself and Lincoln. My name is M. Adler, and I'm not your Saturday host. I'm your Saturday co-host, covering the WNBA draft and the game behind the game. I'm joined today by Hunter Cruz, who covers also the WNBA draft and much international scouting for us at the next. I'm joined by Lincoln. Uh, the biomechanical boy, and Alex Simon, friend of the show, friend of the next, former contributor, and uh, I want to say the digital editor at the Bay Area News Group? Sports editor at SFGate. Your job oh. behind me now, but that's okay. See, this is what I get for not checking LinkedIn often enough. Today we will be, speaking of which, this pod is not brought to you by LinkedIn. By LinkedIn. Today we will be doing our mock draft. And for those of you who don't know, which is everyone on this pod, we are going to be doing a live mock draft, which is we have some intel that we've made up, some intel that is actually real. And everyone who has joined me today, we are going to be rolling D20s. That's a 20-sided dive for you normies at home to determine who we draft. I currently have the spreadsheet up. I'm able to tell you guys who you're drafting. None of you know. You got... I can say for certain that Hunter and Lincoln have pretty solid ideas of what the names I've written out here are and what the odds of picking them are. But, uh, you know, that's based on educated guesses. Educated guesses, Lincoln. Anyone, would anyone like to add any comments, any questions, any concerns before we get started? Several. Uh, <laughs> one, Wait. first off, uh, how, how realistic is the D20 going to be in this regard? Like, well, that depends. Do you have a good D20 or have you like weighted it to one side? <laughs> I don't know. We can find out. And I certainly can see if the tip of the D20 is cold to figure out if that's what we need to make it work. But uh, <laughs> the other question I mainly had was just how should we go about trades if we were interested in potentially making trades during this mock draft? I guess it depends on what pick you have. It's up to you to, to determine how realistic that is. You know, Alex, uh, I... I can say that you are leading us off because one of the teams assigned to you is Indiana. And so, you know, are you going to trade the first overall pick? I no. I'm, I'm going to keep that one. I'm thinking farther down the draft of the second or third team I have. So, but. so that, that might be a little unrealistic. But yeah, as far as it pertains to that, you know, see, see who you can get, see, see what offers come about. Um, you know, the, the point of this is to be a really solid historical artifact so that in three years we can review it and see how well we did. And, you know, if that involves... Um, you making a trade from Washington to the um, to uh, the uh, WNBL team, the, the the Perth Lynx? So be it. All right, I'm ready to go. Then. Love the Perth Lynx. Great. Uh, yeah, for I those don't listeners, think questions. Yeah, for those listeners, and uh, also for everyone who's actually on the pod today, to go over to make sure we all know who we're drafting from. Uh, I have Atlanta, Dallas, and Vegas. Hunter, you have Los Angeles, Minnesota, New York, and Seattle. Alex has Indiana, Phoenix, and Washington, and Lincoln has Chicago, Connecticut, and that's it. That's it. They have a lot of picks. <laughs> they have a lot of picks. I've done the math. Um, yeah. So, Alex, do you want to get us started? I would be happy to. I have the first overall pick for the Indiana Fever. Uh, I am Lynn Dunn. I have been telegraphing who I wanted to pick with this pick basically since the second it flashed on the board. Would you like uh, to I roll your D20? My D12 die, and I am not D12. joking. I did no, get D12. a 20. 
excuse me, my D20 die came up with a 20. Oh, thank God. I was really afraid you'd hit a one. Congratulations. You have drafted Caitlin Clark. I'm I'm morbidly curious as to what was the non Caitlin Clark option that you were giving me at. And so for the so you're familiar with the concept of D20s as far as it relates to. OK, yeah. So you roll high number that good. You roll low number that bad. If you had rolled a two, it's still Caitlin Clark. If you had rolled a one, congratulations. You have drafted a graduate student from Old Dominion, K Clark. Oh, that would have been That's a good rough. bit. Maybe that would have been the funnier one to do with the like the Caitlin Clark, but it's the Phoenix accountant on those commercials or whatever. The thing about is. okay, the thing about okay, the thing about that is that is Kevin. First of all, that's Kevin Clark's wife. In case you guys didn't know. Oh, huh. small also, world. Also, her day job same as mine, city planner. Yeah, sorry, city planner, not accountant. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, Caitlin Clark. I mean, look, I came on this podcast right at the turn of the new year and said, if Caitlin goes pro, the Fever are making the finals. Uh, I think I should stand by that bold prediction. Eventually uh, or this year? No, no, no. As in in 2024. That was my uh, bold prediction for 2024. Uh, wow. So, yeah, I'll stick with it. I'm pretty confident in it. Who's got number two? I, I look forward to the worst defensive backcourt in a final series ever. Hunter, you got number two. You're on the clock. I'm on the clock here with LA. My number is eight. Congratulations, Hunter. You have drafted Camilla Cardoso. Cardoso at two? There's a chance LA could have gotten Cardoso at four, at two. A little bit early here, but I like Cardoso a lot. She's definitely grown on, on me across the season. Elite defender. Um, yeah, definitely good for Chicago, potentially to get Brink at three. Okay, I'm glad that I've written out alternative odds here because Lincoln, you're up with Chicago. Yeah, uh, Chicago, we've been fielding offers at three. Um, Alex, you're waving your hand? There has been an offer for three, but I'm gonna let Lincoln go first and say it that way. Right, um, I've received an offer from Washington uh, if the first two went the way that we thought they would, but given the scenario and what's on the board, I'm going to have to politely decline moving down to number six and uh, swapping 2025 Atlanta first for a 2026 Connecticut first, or actually I think it's it's the Phoenix first. Yeah, you would. It's the 2026 Phoenix first. Chicago has their own and Phoenix is first. And at that point, it's Mm. just who do you disbelieve in the most in 25? And I would have let you make the choice. (laughs) Right. But uh, given the circumstances that we've reached in the first two picks, I'm going to have to pass on that. And I've rolled an 18 on my 20-sided die. Congratulations. You have taken Cameron Frank. Wait, 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 wait. We did not take Cameron Frank. Kathy said the wrong name at the podium. The commissioner oh, has no. not been fired. <laughs> the commissioner has been replaced. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was looking at the wrong odds. Congratulations, you have taken Rikia Jackson. And you know they might get they might we're get fine with that. Still, let's go. We're fine with that, I think. Okay. Stick to our guts. And the odds right here. Okay, great. Lincoln, how do you feel about that? You know, I I think that um, sometimes when things don't go the way that you plan them at the beginning of the draft. If you're a little bit later in the draft, you kind of just want to stick to your guns. You have made this decision. You've done your scouting. And, you know, we made our decision. And things may change in front of us, but we're going to stick to what we had planned. Hunter, you are on the clock with LA's pick to round out the lottery. I have number 14. Number 14. Congratulations, you have selected Cameron Brink. We, We did it in the end. Just a, a, a really different process. We scout very differently <laughs> over here. We like taking our, our, our worst player first. It's sort of <laughs> like whenever the Thunder took took Usman Jang over Jalen Williams. It's kind of like our strategy here. But yeah, I like <laughs> this I like this pick here. This Shout out to all three of our listeners who understand that. This is all just to get Cam Brink that little extra motivation. Yeah, just, yeah. just yeah. Everyone down to her, including ourselves. her own team. Okay, now I am up at number five. And I roll an 18. For Dallas at five. Yes, and that gives me the second point guard off the board. 
Carla laid that. Let's go. That's a good job, Greg. Yes, Greg goes with with his favorite player off the board. He instead turns to the draft and staff option, draft and stash option of the French guard, Carla Leite, point guard who, is, who has expressed pretty strong interest in playing at the WNBA for a very crowded Dallas roster. This allows them to defer the pick for one, maybe even two years down the road. And they really do need a point guard in the future. They do. That brings us to Alex with Washington's number six pick. You would think, but... Washington and Chicago had multiple contingency plans involved in trade discussions. And Washington and Mike Tebow, we are going to accept Chicago's offer as long as the offer still stands, uh, which I'm getting a head nod that it is. So the Mystics are trading pick number six to the sky for picks eight and 13. So Chicago is now back on the board. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, We're doing this too. Because we want to make M's life that much more difficult. Oh, I had oh my god, the odds that I have written out for the thirteenth pick. Oh dear. <laughs> well, we call this um, planning on the fly. Lincoln, um, what'd you roll? Let's. You're now on the clock. Roll an eleven. We've rolled an eleven for Chicago with the sixth pick. Congratulations, you have. Moved up to select Angel Reese. You know, I like that. I like adding Angel and Rikia is a good tandem. I also think, by the way, that not to get too meta, that feels like something Chicago would have to do if they wanted to get Angel. If you look at a lot of the mock drafts, seven is about the highest Angel goes, but quite a few people have connected her to the links that if Chicago, for whatever reason, said, mm-hmm. we want Angel... I think this would need to get done. Yeah, it's not that yeah. realistic. Yeah. And that concludes the first half of the first round in this mock draft. After the break, we will continue with on with the first round. Before we continue on with today's mock draft, here's a word from our sponsor, Robin Hood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA. Robinhood is the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold get you the, gets you the most for your retirement thanks to the IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal information. Claim as of quarter one, 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investments involve risk, including losses. Limitations apply to RRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood goal for one year from the date of the first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. 3% matches on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC, member SIPC, is a registered broker-dealer. So to recap so far, we have Caitlin Clark going number one to Indiana, Camilla Cardoso going number two to L.A., Akia Jackson three to Chicago, Cameron Brink four to L.A., Carla Lete, number five to Dallas, and Angel Reese, number six to Chicago, who has moved up to select her. Moving on, we hit Hunter at number seven, drafting for the Lynx. All right, for us here, we have number two. You have rolled a two? Mm Mm-hmm, number two. Congratulations, you have drafted J.C. Sheldon. That's a good pick, Minnesota. J.C. Shelton, that's not a bad. That's not a bad fit here. No, it's not a bad fit. You need backcourt. You need backcourt help. You need, you need, backcourt, you need backcourt help. help. Maybe yeah. not the player. I think you know some fellow GMs might have expected going to Minnesota there, but sometimes you roll a two. I think we're pretty happy with her falling to us at number seven. Good value. I have to assume you are. Now, because of the trade, we move on to Alex drafting at eighth overall for Washington. Yes, and we roll the dice and end up with a 15. Congratulations, you have selected Aaliyah Edwards. 
Ah, oh, this I cannot be more thrilled with this. This is a player I significantly considered at six anyway, but I have now moved down two spots, still get that player, end up with the first pick in the second round for my troubles. I'm I'm feeling wonderful. You have done a bang up job for certain. Now it comes back to uh, me, me, Greg Bibb, at number nine. And I have, oh God, rolled a two. I've drafted Isabel Borlais. Australian guard leading the W and not, is she leading the WNBL in scoring? No, she's uh, first among teenagers in the WNBL in scoring. That sounds right. Not a lot of competition for, there for that title. She was, however, first no, team Tom. all WNBL. Don't ask me how much that matters. Again, uh, as with a very full roster, we have again deferred our pick. So now, again, we have a, we're really stocking up the cupboard here with uh, future options. And this also means that we are going to have to deal with the roster crunch that comes with Paige Robinson, Lou Lopez, et cetera, being on our attraction stash lists. I was genuinely wondering when Jonathan Cole took over Dallas with this draft strategy in Dallas. Jonathan Cole would not have taken his board lays at night. I can tell you that much. Moving on to the 10th overall pick, we now go to the very interesting team of Connecticut. Yes, um, Connecticut is very um, interested in this pick and have rolled a 12. Okay. Uh, with the 12th overall, oh wow, everyone's gone. 10th overall pick. With the 10th overall pick, you have rolled a 12, and that means you have drafted, gone, gone, gone. You have drafted Charisma Osborne. You know, I like that pick. Um, we're going to look for help in the backcourt, get some defense in the room. Um, yeah, she can run in transition. Alyssa Thomas is great at running in transition. This is <laughs> this is a solid fit, I think. Yeah. What if you had Alyssa Thomas with less weird shoulders and she was a foot shorter? <laughs> that foot is rough. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like it. Speaking of Jonathan Cobb, he's on the board. Hunter, you have the 11th overall pick. Yeah, here for New York at at number 11, we have rolled an 8. Sorry, I thought that was the sound of the dice rolling. An 8 at number 11 lands you Markeisha Davis. Athleticism, we really like Marquisha, Marquisha Davis here. Um, the is, it Mar is, is it Marquisha or Marquisha? I think it's Marquisha. I think it's Marquisha. Okay. Marquisha okay. Davis. Uh, really, really good athlete. One of the best athletes in the class. Really competes on defense. Um, we're really just looking for some more some more depth in our room. And bringing her in, yeah, solid pick here, I think. We'd love to see it. That brings up pick number 12, which is me drafting for the Atlanta... Not the Hawks, the dream. And I'm rolling a nine, which means we have drafted Elizabeth Kitley. <laughs> Another full roster, <laughs> as I see Lincoln and Hunter both celebrating. Uh, yes, because of this uh, roster that is maybe definitely not quite as credited as Dallas's, but, you know, has some competition for those later spots, especially in the front court. We're going to take a draft and stash because she tore her ACL only about a month ago, two months ago. And, you know, with this pick, we get another year to see what's going on with Nas Hillman. We get another year to see what's going on with Letitia and me here. So when we get to uh, training camp next year, we know what's going on. We have a really good sense of what to do there. Yeah. This is I'm also a player who honestly might have gone higher if she was not a draft and stash. The rare inverse of uh, Stephanie Suarez. To, to be frank, this is a player that I would consider at eight with Washington as that draft and stash in that regard, uh, in that range. But also mm. with this trade at 13, that certainly helps. I believe yeah. we, we're rolling into the second round here, are we not? We are rolling here into the second round. And, well, uh, oh, go ahead. No, I, I'm just getting ready to go. I believe it's my role for it is. Washington. I roll a 17. With Washington, having rolled a 17, you have drafted... This is tricky, because Washington... I wasn't prepared to figure out what Washington would want at 13. I was prepared for what they wanted at, like, 22. 
you have drafted probably... Let's say it's Nick and Mule. I can get behind that. I certainly think that uh, the Mystics are very much not in position to be necessarily aiming for anything but Paige Beckers in 2025. Uh, during the 2024 season, it would not surprise me to see a draft and stash type pick. So I would imagine that if they made a move like this, you would see a potential international player. Hunter, I'm sure you could name Lakin or Puyoch as an option that they would be happily considering in this draft, as it were. But uh, I do think Nika Mule is going to fit pretty nicely into the backcourt in Washington because yeah. they have they need everything right about mm-hmm. now. If, if we had any idea of how much Mike Thibault liked engaging with uh, the French Federation or Australians in general... We, we might agree. Unfortunately, <laughs> they don't tend to do that ever. Which, yeah. hey, man, look, if you had to play at ESA, you probably wouldn't come over from France either. No offense. We do have some international still on the board here, and Seattle is up right here. Yeah, they are. We have rolled a six. Congratulations, Seattle. You have drafted Nadia Porch. That's just, we're, we're building the all-Australian team here. This is our goal. Um, we want to just build an entire lineup of Australians. We're bringing, we're going to bring Lauren Jackson back as a coach. This is just, this is, this is the way. What do you, what do you your coach? She's LA a is still playing. She's yeah. still playing. Also, well, it's going to be what? some 1910s-ass baseball. I mean, <laughs> they've already got the color scheme down, don't they? That's pr- the yeah, same. The same, it's same. You could just start scheme. wearing an Opals jersey. I bet they if, if Ezzy Magbagor showed up to a Storm game and accidentally played in an Opals jersey, would anybody truly notice the difference? Like, are we are we sure? There's like three Jade people Melbourne who would notice would the notice. difference. Yeah, Jade is one of them. <laughs> if, if they were playing against LA, Steph Talbot might accidentally pass to her. <laughs> Lincoln, you can't mute yourself all the time. Now it just sounds like I'm talking to myself when, you, when, when I'm actually getting laughs in response. The audience, thinks I don't, <laughs> the audience thinks I don't get laps. Speaking of which, it's time for Indiana to, to draft again. All Alex, right. you're on the board. This this pick's going to have a tough time cracking this roster, but the dice say 13, and I'm intrigued by who I would land. And the dice say Celeste Taylor is going to be joining the Fever Camp. Well, when you talk about a defensive backcourt that would be lacking, there is one way to fix that, and that's to have great fit. French depth. Celeste Taylor, right for this Fever team. I I really like that as a possible option for them. Mm-hmm. You telling me you don't believe in the in the backup stylings of Erica Wheeler and Christy Wallace as uh, premier guard stoppers? I like the the variety that you would be able to get, and the training camp chance is going to be really really thorough there. Very diplomatic of you. Coming up after the break, we will continue on with the rest of the second. Before we close today's episode, let's talk about Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend of baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a consistent supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports. March Madness, NBA, MLB, WNBA, and a lot more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash fire and locked on Fire TV. So with Indiana having just picked, we have everyone's favorite and least problematic team, Las Vegas, on the board. Everyone's favorite drafting team. That is me, and I'm going to roll a seven. 
gives me Jalen Sherrod. Jalen Sherrod. Get ready to learn desert. J- Jalen Sherrod, Sidney Colson. Some speed there. What a decade ago, maybe. <laughs> oh. It's certainly going to, like that. That type of pick from Vegas would create quite the training camp competition at the back of the roster. Which it would. And That's we know how well Colorado uh, Colorado grads have done on Vegas training camps in recent years. Oh. <laughs> oh. Wow. That's a low blow. Too soon. Hey. That hurts. <laughs> I had her ranked like seventh in that class. It hurts me more. It was a good. T- it was a good take. We don't there were unintangibles. We couldn't. We couldn't know at the time. She has another chance on our roster this year, though. So yeah, she does. That's true. I hope she's learned how to play defense. Uh, coming You're up next, Hunter, you Phoenix. have the New York pick. Yeah, for us at New York here, we have rolled a number ten. Number ten. Congratulations, you have drafted. Mackenzie Forbes. Yeah, Mackenzie Forbes that's is fun. someone that, someone that's really r- risen for us over this process. She's a bucket, um, mid-range buckets. If is she a problem? If this was two thousand five, see, two thousand five, she's in our lottery. But uh, in 2000, 2024, we still have first round grade on her, and we're getting here her here in the second round. Um, pretty happy with this pick here. I think most players in this class would be. Uh lottery picks in 2005 given how bad the lottery was that year shout out to janelle mccarville shout out to sancho little the fifth overall pick in that class somehow <laughs> back at it again with the sixth pick in the second round is vegas my all seeing wisdom i've rolled a 16 for vegas and that means i have drafted and a jump i feel I feel bad for Lake Con. It's so late at the late there in in France. She can't even go to sleep. It's probably two o'clock in the morning by now. She probably went to bed picks. a few hours ago. She doesn't care about this league right now. Um, Hannah Jump, by the way, very much has a chance to be a WNBA contributor this year. I don't mm-hmm. necessarily know if she's going to make a WNBA roster out of training camp, but if I'm a WNBA team, she's somebody that like is my first hardship call. Much like, you, yeah, much, much like Taylor Mitchell, she's going to get cut in camp, and then uh, at the end of the season, you're like, hey, she led the league in efficiency in, like, five minutes. She, but you bring <laughs> her in, you play her for, like, ten minutes, and just hope she can hit, like, four threes in a quarter and just ruin a game for somebody? Like, exactly. she's going to have a role in the league. She feels like a very Vegas player in terms of, like, hey, they fit our scheme. Let's see what happens in camp. We don't know who else is available. We haven't. We don't even know the rest of the names available at 20. A thousand We're going to to do some, some real fun... Oh, this team signed Hannah Jump in August. It's going to be great. <laughs> exactly. That team, Washington. Moving on, Lincoln, uh, you have our next pick from Connecticut. Yeah, Connecticut, we're just looking to fill out the roster maybe. We've got an 11 on the die. That means you have drafted Abby Shu. We like that. Um, it's a fun player. We, you know, can always use some scoring. Especially in Connecticut, you just need some 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 depth and some scoring. It's a really fun pick. Um, we're excited to bring her into camp. Uh, uh, yeah. I just realized. No, definitely nothing wrong with the board here. I'm rolling for Atlanta. If I didn't mess anything up. I think we're good. I have rolled a seven. Can somebody remind me what AF probably stands for? I've completely forgotten who who I've written down here. Who would AF stand for? AF. Ah, Alicia Flores. We have taken the best <laughs> Spanish guard available. You know, you know, as Dan Padover, I'm watching some of these players go off the board ahead of uh, ahead of Alicia Flores, and I'm saying, you know, they're nice, they're okay, but they're not like you know, 19 years old and and supremely athletic they can shoot free throws but they're not 19 years old and supremely athletic who needs it i have a question yeah is Alyssa peely still on the board i was really hoping oh, you yes. weren't going to i was really hoping whether you weren't going to ask whether i forgot about Alyssa peely that's you interesting about Alyssa peely? i was really hoping you weren't going to ask if i forgot about Alyssa peely speaking of which 
Uh, Alex, it's your roll for Washington. For Washington, we end up with a five. We're going to pretend that that translates to Alyssa Peely. <laughs> Congratulations, you've drafted Alyssa Peely. Everyone forgot she was in the draft, which is crazy. <laughs> GM slept. We we forgot too. All my teams, we we forgot. Uh, nah, it's okay. It's the commissioner's fault. We're we have yet another reason to fire Kathy. <laughs> Alex, how do you feel about drafting Alyssa Peely? I mean, I feel like I got somebody who's a first round Gatorade almost at the back end of the second round. Um, <laughs> if nothing else, this will keep her relatively speaking inexpensive into the new CBA. To be fair. There is always at least one player that the general public has a first round grade on that will slip to the back end of the second round almost inexplicably. <laughs> and, and look, like shout out to Arella Garantes. We just we just don't know. Like you just there will there probably will be somebody who does this. It may not be Alyssa Peely. Uh but I'll benefit from it with Washington. That's yeah. I'm I'm really Absolutely. liking this Washington team that's built through the draft right now. Yeah, if I had not, at least five games this year. If I had not completely forgotten to put odds on my spreadsheet for Alyssa Peely after pick twelve, she would have gone to Vegas, but she didn't because Vegas accidentally threw out their score sheet and had to draft my memory. <laughs> they forgot about Alyssa I mean, Peely. It's not the worst thing that Vegas has done in the draft. It's not the worst thing that Vegas has done. Period. Lincoln, you're up with, with Connecticut's yeah. final pick of this mock draft. <laughs> Uh, Connecticut's back with a natural 20 on the die. That is good rolling for the first time all night. That translates to... Drum roll, please, Hunter. Leilani Correa! Hey! You know, we like that. Um, Wing size, wing defense, and shooting. That's something that absolutely fits with Alyssa Thomas. You know, learn behind Duana Bonner for a year. Hopefully you can fill that role a little bit when... um, the wired hanger finally meets its match. The wired hanger? I've been it's saying an Alexis it for months. Morris joke. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> I've been saying it for months that uh, Correa is the most Connecticut player that they could draft here. So I like this pick. Yeah. Um, should we give? Um, should we really give Tiffany Mitchell a run for her money in camp? I'm not gonna. I'm not convinced she's not a better player than Tiffany Mitchell. We Let's have our... the fact that somehow our contract is guaranteed and move on to Hunter, your final pick for New York. Yeah, for New York, we've already gotten um, Forbes, and we and we have Marquisha Davis. So here we have rolled a ten. Congratulations, you have drafted Layla Lakehan. We're, we're, we apologize for making her stay up so long, but we are really proud of this pick. We love having our French players over. We have mm-hmm. three under team control, technically. And I like the pick here. She's very athletic, can shoot a little bit, kind of. Good pick and roll ball handler, can defend. Oh, there's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot to like there. And she's mm-hmm. only 19 years old. Gets a lot of steals. She does get a lot of steals. And uh, for Vegas, I'm going to close out uh, the first rounds of our mock draft by trying to figure out if there's actually anyone left that Vegas would even care about. Uh, we're going to roll. And, oh no, Vegas didn't get their pick in time. The clock runs over. It's Phoenix's draft pick to close out the second round. <laughs> they forgot. <laughs> uh, hi, yes, Phoenix here uh we got an eight you got an eight congratulations because you have drafted well, I, I have this again oh, <laughs> oh pause. I'm, I'm hearing something here yes uh phoenix drafts Paige beckers uh <laughs> no. a bo jackson <laughs> las vegas raiders situation and just say screw the rules let's see if we can convince her to come right now so phoenix says Paige, we're gonna draft you anyway Let's see what we can do. Uh, Paige it's looks been at the process. Since we got a voided pick anyway, we're overdue. <laughs> Paige looks at the prospect of <laughs> playing with all of that and the prospect of playing with Azzy Fudd instead. She's going to stick with Azzy Fudd. Your pick has been voided. There will only be 35 picks in this year's draft. To be honest, you know, look, 34. Worth it. Worth it. 
Worth worth the attempt. That's all didn't, I can say. Didn't, didn't Vegas get voided too? That's next year. We're we're still a Got year him. away from that one. You know, we're really putting the mock in mock draft. Correct. Hey! (laughs) We had to go out with a bang, if nothing else. Right, Lincoln? Exactly. So thank you for joining us for another another sterling episode of this Saturday edition of Locked on Women's Basketball. Please make your next listen. Whatever it says on this document. That's Locked on Sports (laughs) Today. The first ever ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Have a great rest of your weekend, everyone.